Good morning, students. My name is Mr. Shengoma. Today, we are looking at graphs. So we shall begin by discussing the different types of graphs. Then after discussing the different types of graphs, we shall have to move on to how to draw the graphs. And finally, we shall have to look at how to answer questions using the graph. To begin with, we have different types of graphs. Number one, we have what we call the polynomial graphs. Remember last time we looked at the polynomial and we said polynomial is the increase of powers. Polynomial is the increase of power. Remember we started from power zero, we came to power one, we came to power two, we came to power three, we came to power four, and we say these powers will increase nonstop. So that is the polynomial, polynomial system. Now, remember we said also for any power zero is the same as a number constant value. For any power zero is the same as a constant value. So we say this is one. And for power one is equal to uh, the base itself. And then the other powers will, will continue. So this is what we meant by the polynomial, the polynomial system. Now, under the polynomial system, we generate different equations. These first two always give us linear. When you bring in the power two, it takes us to quadratic. And when you bring in power three, it takes us to cubic. So basically, when we are talking about a linear graph, it comes from a function or an equation that will contain only x and a constant value or only x alone. When we talk about quadratic, we are talking about a function or we are talking about equation which starts with x square, and then it can continue with the other constant, just like the way I have shown you there. And when we talk about cubic, also it shows us a function uh, which begins from, from x power three. So that is the difference between these three polynomial graphs. So those are the polynomial graphs which we shall see today. Then four, we shall look at the exponential, the exponential, the graph. We shall look at the exponential graph where the unknown is a power. Remember for polynomial, all the x's are the bases. For polynomial, polynomial graphs, all unknown, polynomial graph, all the unknowns are base. For polynomial graph, all the unknown are base. Now, when you come for exponential, unknown is power. When you come to exponential graph, unknown is a power. We shall look at that. And when you come to reciprocal graph, when you come to reciprocal graph, when you come to reciprocal graph, you do realize that the unknown will be a denominator. Unknown is denominator. So these are the different kinds of graphs that we shall, we shall look at. These are the different graphs we shall look at. Now, when you look at these, Graph number one is polynomial. We have A, B, C. And for all the polynomial graph, 
we are going to have the unknown as a base. Number two, we have the exponential graph. And for exponential graph, the unknown is a power. And number three, we have got the reciprocal graph. And for reciprocal graph, the unknown is a denominator. The unknown is a denominator. So those are the five graphs which we are going to concentrate at. Now to begin with is a linear graph. For the linear graph, this is the graph which we have been looking at so many times, right from, uh, from one and primary, right? It is uh, given by the equation m x plus c and we know m stands for slope and slope means gradient slope means gradient and c stands for constant value constant value that is a number which does not have a known x look here above we we said we have got um here x for linear and then a constant x for linear and then a constant so here our x is here and then this a c stands for a constant now m stands for gradient the gradient means in some uh, equations you might have something like 3x plus 5. so the 3 which is in front of x this is the coefficient of x that is the gradient coefficient of x that's the gradient and then five that's our constant value so for all linear graphs which we have seen remember this line here is passing at the point zero zero is passing at the point zero zero there point zero zero is known as the origin Point zero zero is known as the origin. So in graphs, whenever you hear the word origin, we mean point zero zero. Two, when you look at this graph here, it's not touching at zero zero. These are examples. It's touching above. It's touching above on y-axis. So when a graph is touching above on y-axis, it has a different implication also. And three, also it's touching below. Right, and also this one is touching below. Also, when you look properly, you do realize the first graph from left to right is going up. Let's write going up. And then this next graph, it is going down. And then the next one is going up and this one is going down. Remember, we determine going up and going down basing from the left side towards the right side. Basing from the left side towards the right side. So that's how we determine the, the slope. That's how we determine the slope. So for this case here, we shall always say, the first graph here, this has got a positive slope. This has got a positive slope. So and we call it positive gradient. Positive gradient. And this one, which is going down, it has got a negative gradient. Negative gradient. So when the line is going up, it shows positive gradient. And when line is going down, it shows negative gradient so a line can show positive gradient when the y-axis is cutting up or down so when the y-axis is cutting up like down like this one number three here when the line is cutting down down here we have a negative value of y so that means if my graph was for example y is equal to x it will be like minus three why? Why minus three? Because cutting below the origin. 
right? And for this number four here, the graph number four, it might be y is equal to, now it's cutting down and it's going down. So when it's going down, we said negative slope. So that means I would have negative x because it's going down. And then it is cutting the y-axis below. Also, it has a negative, a negative constant. So this is how we, we, we determine, we know a linear graph, positive slope and then negative y-intercept. Always the constant value is the value where the graph is cutting y-axis. This has negative slope here, and then also it has got negative y-axis. So meaning constant number is where my graph is cutting the y-axis. Note, whenever we are drawing a linear graph, at all time when we are drawing a linear graph, we should always use a ruler to draw the line. We should always use a ruler to draw a line. We shall see when we are drawing graphs in the next in the next chapter. We shall see when you are drawing graphs in the next chapter. Now let's see the nature of the quadratic graph. Quadratic graphs. As we said, for quadratic graphs, we have got the, yeah, we have got x square. So for all quadratic graphs, we must have x square. That's a coefficient. X, eh? sorry, that is the power x square, right? So when you mean coefficient, it's like this. If I have two x square plus five x and plus maybe seven. If I have something like that, it means the coefficient of x square is two. The coefficient of x is five. And then the constant value is seven. So coefficient is the value which is in front of the unknown. Coefficient is the value which is in front of the unknown. So if I have x square, its coefficient is two. If I have got five, I mean, x its coefficient is five for this example there. So if I don't have any number, means the coefficient is one. So if here there is no number, it means there is a one. The coefficient is one always if there is no number. So remember, there is no zero if you have got x. So if there is x square or y square or p or q, there is always a one which is not written. So these are different natures of graphs. These are different natures of a, of a cubic graph. So in other words, a cubic graph is known as a parabola. For parabolas, they always have one turning point, one turning point. They have one turning point. You can see the turning point is here. You can see the turning point is there. You can see the turning point is here. So these are different eh, turning points for parabolas. Even this one, the turning point is here. The turning point is there. So for all parabolas, they have got one turning point. So the turning points are of two natures for parabola. That is quadratic graph. It must be curving facing up like this, or it can be curving facing down like that. For any parabola to face up, it means the coefficient of x square is positive, mm, like two. And for any graph to face down, it means the coefficient of x square is minus. For any graph to face down, it means the coefficient of x square is negative. So for this first graph here, one, two, three, four, five, and six, these are samples. The first three, the first four are facing up. So if they're all facing up, it means their x square is positive coefficient. 
Now, normally, normally, just for these three, when the turning point is touching the y-axis, when the turning point is touching the y-axis, so basically, for the first one, it, the function could be something like x square, or 2x square, or 3x square, or 4 or 5. But there is no any other part. There is no x, there is no constant. But for this one, which is touching bro number two, the graph could be something like um, 2x square. And touching below means like minus 2 or minus 3 or minus 4 or minus 5. Why? Because this stands for y-intercept. A constant value in a graph here will stand for y-intercept, most especially if it's from a polynomial graph. And for number three, if the graph like this one is facing up and it is cutting the y-axis up, then the y-intercept is always positive. The y-intercept is always positive. The y-intercept is always positive. Now, when you look at number four and number six, Number four and number six, they're the ones which are trying to demonstrate for us any function that can have um, like this, let's say uh, 2x square, for, for example, let's say minus x minus two. Why? Because the turning point is not on y-axis, it's besides, eh? here, the turning point is besides, right? Even this one, it shows a sample which is like a square, maybe, maybe, plus x, maybe, plus 2. Why? Because the turning point is away from y-axis. But when you look at number 5, number 5 is showing us a sample like, remember number 5 is facing down? Sorry, this sample of number 6 must have a negative here. Look, number 6, it has negative here. Why negative? Because it's facing down. It must have negative uh, coefficient of x squared because it's facing down. And even 5 is facing down. Also, 5 must have uh, negative x squared because for all the curves facing down, they must have negative x squared. But because the turning point is touching y-axis there, and it has origin, and it's at the origin. So if it is at the origin, then we, we will not have any other part of the graph it will stop only there we shall not have plus x we shall not have or maybe plus three so normally when we are touching the y-axis we don't have the x of the quadratic x i mean like when number six this part here for number six see, this part won't be there and when you're touching the origin when you're touching the origin then we shall not have like number four here you see this minus two we shall not have it here in number five because um, we are touching the origin. And as I said before, when you are at the origin, it means you are at zero, zero. So we don't have any y, y reading. So these are the examples of um, how a quadratic graph known as parabola is. Remember, it might face up or it might face down, which I, ind I indicated for you here. And when it faces up coefficient, of x square is positive. And when it faces down, the coefficient of x square is negative. So we might have curving up or we might have curving down. One most important thing is the knot. Apart from the linear graph, apart from the linear graph, all graphs that we are going to draw, we shall not use ruler. For all graphs we shall draw, we shall not use ruler. Only we shall draw the graphs using free hand. For the rest of the graphs, we shall use free hand. We shall never use ruler again. Only the linear graph, we shall use ruler. Okay, we go now to the cubic graph. We go to the cubic graph. So as we say, the cubic graph will contain x power three. The cubic graph will contain x power three. And for a full cubic graph, it will have the x square, it will have the x 
and it will have the five. Remember, the five stands for Y intercept. And what's the meaning of Y intercept? It is where the graphs cut the Y axis. It's where the graph cuts the Y axis. If this is my Y axis and my graph passes here, so this is known as my Y intercept there, where the graph cuts the Y axis, if that's my Y axis. Okay. So these are the different natures. These are the different natures, which we shall see, right? Different samples. Yeah? Sample like uh, Fx is equal to X cube, right? Maybe this one could be Fx is equal to minus X cube of different natures. Maybe this one maybe could be uh, uh, X square, X, sorry, X cube, maybe plus X square uh, plus X, something like that, or minus five. Why minus five? Because here it is at the negative. And maybe this one could be uh, Fx is equal to X cube uh, plus X square, um, something like that, maybe um, plus X. Yeah, why there is no, because I can see here it's touching zero, zero, and zero, zero is the origin. So I don't, I don't need to keep the, I don't need to keep the constant value. So these are the first three important graphs. Then we go to the exponential graph here. As we said, exponential graph unknown is power. For exponential graph, unknown is, is a power. Okay. so. The base will be a number, and then the power will be the x, or the base will be a number, and the power will have x and something else. Right. So here, a stands for any number, and then x stands for the unknown. So these are the natures of the graphs. The graph will be like an L. It looks like an L. The nature of the graph looks like an L. So we're supposed to remember whenever we're looking at the exponential graph, where the unknown is power or part of the power, the graph should be looking like an L, right? You can see here the first graph, you can see like an L. The second graph, you can see like an L. And the third graph, you can see like an L. So whenever you look at exponential graph, exponential graph, remember from today, the unknown is a power. And then it looks like an L. Right, final. We have got here the reciprocal graph, the reciprocal graph. So when you're talking about reciprocal graph, when you're talking about reciprocal graph, we said unknown must be, right? We said the unknown must be, the unknown must be denominator. The unknown must be denominator so once we don't have a denominator that's not reciprocal once we don't have a known at the denominator that is not reciprocal graph so for reciprocal graph we must have a known as denominator but we don't mind if the numerator also there is unknown but we must have a known at the denominator now the reciprocal graph is a very interesting graph this is a graph which is in the nature of having two graphs in one, right? We have two separate graphs in one. Why? Because at a point, these graphs don't meet. At a point, these graphs will not meet. As you can see here, this part is alone, this part is alone. So for reciprocal graph, you must always ensure you have got two graphs in one. See, this one and this one, they don't meet. Never join them there. You see this part here? Never join them. Reciprocal graph, even this one, number three here. Look, number one, not joined. Number two, not joined. Number three, look at this part here. There are two separate graphs. So that is the nature of a reciprocal graph. At one point, they will separate. Are we together? At one point, they will separate. So that is what we call reciprocal graph. Remember, for reciprocal graph, the unknown must be denominator. And then you must draw two parts. One part on the left, one part on the right. 
but never join the two. Once you know it is a reciprocal graph. Okay. The second part is how to draw graph. Okay. Now, step one, how to draw graph. All the graphs must be drawn in a grid paper. That's what I say. You must have a graph paper. For every graph, you must have a graph paper. You must draw it with a scale. That is what we call scale drawing. Right? When we look at sketch, we shall see what a sketch means. All the above graphs we have seen were sketches. All the above graphs we have seen were sketches. A sketch is drawing not to scale. But here we are learning how to draw graph to scale. So we must have a graph paper. Then number two, as I said before, for linear graph, we use ruler. And for all other graphs, we use freehand. Freehand, we shall see how we do that. Now, three is the steps that will make you draw the graph. Step one, you must have the function. For example, um, I must have x squared, that's a function. Or we can say y is equal to x squared. You must have the function. Step two, you must draw the table values. The table value is something like that. X, Y. So maybe negative two, zero, and positive one. That's like a table value. Then you use that, you use that equation to fill, to find the values of Y on the table of value. Then after finding the table value, now you know the values of x and y. So number three, you draw on the grid. You draw on the grid your x and y. That is what we call coordinate plane. x and y is the coordinate plane. Remember to scale. Then after drawing this, so number four, you have to plot the points. For example, I'm plotting here. That's point one, this point two, that's point three, this point four, point five, point six, point seven. See, I've plotted my points. And then Roman five, we need to now join the points. Remember, I said, if it's not a line, you must join the points using a free hand, like me. See, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving. That's what you mean by free hand. That's how we have to draw a graph. Then after, you have to name your graph like that. So this is how we draw the graph. Step one, you must have a function. Step two, you must uh, draw a table value. Step three, you must, uh, you must draw the coordinate plane because you have to use graph paper. Step four, you must plot the points. And then step five, you must join the point. So, from our next class, we shall see how do we draw the graphs. For today, I'm going to stop here. My name is Mr. Ishangoma. Thank you for attending.